Hello, I'm Rachel Larson from the Drupal Association. I have yet another one of the initiative teams for DrupalCon with me today. And today I have David, Ted, Matthew and Tim, who are from the Auto Updates Initiative. So Thursday today at DrupalCon North America will all be about auto updates. But what do we mean by this? I know it's the name of a strategic initiative for Drupal, but can you tell me a little bit about what that means, David? So at the risk of uh, waxing a little philosophical, I think that what I think when I think about Drupal as a project and I think about what it's meant to me and uh, to a lot of the users of the project in terms of enabling them as as developers, as creators for the web, it's that Drupal starts off in this consumer experience that allows you to gradually open the hood as you gain more and more comfort with the systems. And you can rapidly get something that approximates what you want. And then you can diverge from that and, and learn more and level up as a developer as you explore those skills. And the reason why this ties to me and with auto updates is because we've adopted and really embraced Composer as a project, which is great for solving the developer end of the ecosystem where you've already opened up the hood, where you have things like continuous integration, where you have deployment servers, where you have um, local development environments, where you're updating your Composer builds um, or your Composer metadata and packages. What it doesn't really answer for us is what happens with this other end of the spectrum where people are using Drupal as more of a consumer system where they install it traditionally through extracting a tarball, they install plugins, they want to keep it up to date. Uh, they don't necessarily have a budget for managing the site in terms of people continuously being on call, let alone in the middle of the night to apply uh, security updates. Um, so. In a lot of ways, what I see auto updates as tackling as a problem for Drupal and, a, and an opportunity is to enable this complete spectrum all the way from people who are configuring their way to sites all the way to coding their sites, um, as well as the spectrum of use cases they have and harmonizing that under one model that's actually centered on the package management of Composer uh, and the way that that's structured and providing a smooth learning curve as you move from this more consumer oriented experience to a developer oriented experience. Ah, that's cool. that's that's a lot. <laughs> We're actually talking about making some big, big improvements. I mean, that sounds like a lot of work as well. So, so Tim, can you tell me, why is it important that we're doing this? That's uh, a great question. Um, but I think to, to riff a little bit off of what David has said, I think um, you know, over the history of Drupal, what we've done um, time and time again, particularly with our different sort of major release cycles, is we focused really heavily on technical innovation, on staying on the leading edge of how the web is built and enabling kind of the next generation of those sorts of digital experiences. And often user experience and cost of ownership has lagged behind the level of technical innovation that we're capable of. So um, speaking more broadly than just auto updates, uh, for my part, I have felt that the sort of feature release cycle throughout Drupal 8 and into Drupal 9, and I think even going beyond to Drupal 10, has been often about empowering users to take advantage of these robust technical capabilities more easily. So when we talk about auto updates, what we're really sort of saying is we want to empower users to use composer-based dependency management in Drupal more easily. Um, and so that's going to mean that um, you can use the automated updates system to ensure that your site um, doesn't have any sort of blockers that would prevent updates by using the readiness check system to apply those updates in an automated fashion for you and to be capable of rolling back if anything should go wrong with those updates just making it much easier to stay on top of the regular updates uh, for Drupal. And that's, that's important for a few reasons. One is it lays a foundation, as David said, for um, kind of uh, leveling up what people might do. Um, it lets them ease into the composer environment and this deeper um, uh, side of dependency management. But it also lays a foundation for us to, to go the other way, to us to make the the uh, the car, as it were, 
uh, more sophisticated, more of maybe a, an autonomous vehicle of more self-driving so that um, not only perhaps can we automate these updates, but maybe we can use some of this foundational work to think about um, uh, having a module installer sort of project browser more robustly built into Drupal or all sorts of other things that might be possible. And then beyond that, it's important just because um, this ease of use uh, question and this, this lowering the total cost of ownership of Drupal is just going to help the adoption of the project, right? Um, the reputation of Drupal is for this level of technical sophistication and this extreme power that it has to enable people to, to build great things, but some folks are intimidated by it. And the more we can do um, to make it less intimidating and to make it um, take care of itself uh, in the most essential ways, uh, the more people we can bring into the community and the more people who can take advantage of what Drupal can do. I like it. I like it. And you deal with intimidation through education. So, mm -hmm. so talking of which, um, what do we think people might be able to learn at DrupalCon about the initiative uh, on the on that initiative day, Ted? Yeah, we're gonna have a few sessions, um, uh, and so we're gonna start off with kind of overview, which is we're gonna get into some of like the problem space that David and Chen rolled out, but get into more details of like, why is this so important? Like, um, what is the space? A lot of people think, well, I have this process for updating my site. You know, I have Drupal specific hosting maybe, but a lot of the Drupal world doesn't. Um, and, you know, sort of looking at, okay, are people updating to the security updates right now? And, you know, sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. And so that's really, you know, we want to focus on making that as easy as possible to make sure that as many sites as possible are in the latest security releases, especially for Drupal core. Um, and we're going to start off with like, we've already done some work on notifications um, for the security updates coming out. And then we're going to get into this uh, initiative. We really delve into a few different libraries um, in a potential, you know, a module that's going to be in Drupal core, but then some libraries outside of Drupal core. Um, where we're working with other open source projects like Typo3 and Joomla, um, PHP projects um, specifically for some of our libraries that are going to add um, security signing to up to our updates. And then also um, we're working with the update, uh, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, I think I got that right, uh, and we're implementing their spec, the, uh, the update framework. So we're going to have a, hopefully somebody from that initiative give a, a guest talk about, you know, what the framework is outside of Drupal. And then we'll, you know, we'll have talks about how we're going to use it. And then we'll also have a more like contributor to focus, like how, okay, here's the sort of technical details of the libraries that we're making, the Drupal core changes we're making, kind of the, the skills that, um, you know, the different parts. One of the things about this initiative is since we're doing stuff in and outside of Drupal core, there's like different stuff that maybe usually you don't think of as Drupal um, contribution languages. Like we have some Python, we have a lot of like composer expertise um, that we're looking for. Um, so yeah, it's sort of basic overview and then delve in technically deep and then some related sessions on um, say, say uh, XJM is giving a session on dependencies of Drupal core as far as our um, composer dependencies and also JavaScript dependencies because most of these updates will, or this often security updates will require an uh, update to one of these. So how will we handle that? And you know how does that affect our releases right now? Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so it's so many different things coming together. It's gonna be really interesting. Um, yeah. So we, we will have got all these people by the by the uh, the end of sessions on the day really excited and they'd be like oh wow we really want this to happen how can I help how can I participate in the future of auto updates so we will have a contribution time on Wednesday and I know that you've all been working on what that might include and still ideas coming on that. Uh, so is there anything you can tell us about what might be possible to get involved in uh, at DrupalCon and the future of auto updates? Uh, maybe also things that aren't code too. Matthew. Thank you, Rachel. 
So I've had the unique opportunity over the last couple of years to, to kind of sit, not with the auto, auto updates initiative, but at a, at a couple of conferences like Midwest Dev Summit and, and DrupalCon and just listening to what's going on. And it's always been fascinating to me, but I haven't actually had the chance to dig into two things. Um, particularly, there's a, a couple of needs in, if, if you have a strong interest in Composer or PHP, uh, or a, an, an interest in DevOps and hosting. Uh, those are, are things that, and skills that you, you can be immediately applicable. But more than that, a lot of times when I am listening in, I, I'm confused by all the ter terminology and it's new to me too. And so what we can do now as well is, is start thinking about how we're going to promote um, auto updates in as we as we as Drupal service providers or, or, or agencies are are trying to sell Drupal to to our customers, and also to you know like if if I am having trouble understanding it, we need to improve our initiative documentation and and start working on documentation now so that the rest of us can can learn quicker and and be easier to. Uh, um, adopt auto updates um, and and update our own our own core instance. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. In fact, thank you to you all. Uh, I think we'll leave something for a, a, a later video, and then we'll see your keynote uh, at DrupalCon as well, and get involved in the sessions and the contribution later in the day. I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be fantastic, and uh, I look forward to meeting you all there. Thank you. We'll speak soon. Thank you, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, Rachel.